Guys, um, bit of an update on the channel. Um, for, <laughs> first thing I want to say is there's a lot of videos coming up. Um, there's a batch of about 70 that have already been uploaded. I've just got to put the descriptions in. What they have come from is basically Google have changed how they work um, and decided that channels under 1,000 subscribers don't get paid bugger all. Um, now, those videos, those 70-odd videos, generate around $50 a month. So basically, I've just said, well, you know what? I'll just move them onto my normal channel, and I'll just put up some subsets, because it also means it's easier for to me to put some updates on tutorials anyway. Um, so that I do apologize for that, um, because quite simply, I've had to move them in there um, just to move them from, from the other channel. Um, the stuff that's relating to the basketball and some other bits and pieces is actually a business project I'm working on. And there is some other stuff coming up relating to power plants as well. And I'll update those as soon as everything starts moving. Because um, at the moment, these are works in progress. They're, they're actually work. They've already been designed. Uh, the clothing range, for example, you can actually buy. Um, but there are some business entities that were, there's five companies in one, on one business and the other one, uh, each, each business that we're launching costs about a million euros each. So there's a lot of stuff going on in the background and I'm supposed to be going over to Croatia around March, but we'll wait and see. It'll be the end of March anyway. Um, same as there's another one in Brazil, but we're still negotiating because there's several team members involved and some want a fair chunk out of it because uh, they've been working on it for several years it's just that it hasn't gone very far and now we're starting to look at how we can make this go throughout Europe suddenly they want a payout before we've got the first pay um, which is normally where I find a lot of businesses fall flat in their face everyone's trying to divide it up before they've got um, their first payment they're sitting there wanting a hundred percent of zero um, instead of sitting there thinking, I'd rather have 20% of something, you know, and this is one of the things you do come across in business quite a lot. Um, it's bizarre, you know, people say, well, I, I need a salary, I need this, you know what, so does everybody else. You know, at the end of the day, these businesses, you either throw yourself into it and make it happen, or you're looking for a job. Um, there, was something, there was something I seen the other day, uh, relating to a guy that went for a job. And to be honest, it's one of these uh, inspirational things. It's completely fabricated. Um, guy goes for a job interview, needs the money badly, gets there, and the owner of the place, this is for an office job, says, oh, could you mop the floors? Because he's trying to see whether the guy will actually go the extra mile. He mops the floors and goes, oh, yeah, you're hired. Uh, send me your email. Um, so he goes... I don't have an email. I don't even have a computer. I don't, I don't need them. And it's like, oh, well, you're no good for this job then because you need to have, how do you get on in this world without an email? Um, so he didn't get the job. So he, he leaves and he goes through his wallet and he's only got a small amount of money. Um, he then takes that bit of money, buys some potatoes, sells the potatoes door to door, realizes he can make a living doing this, and then he works his way up from a few bags, to a wheelbarrow, to a truck, to a fleet of trucks, to supermarkets, etc., etc. The whole point being is he worked his way through the issue of no email. Um, final bit being he is doing his life insurance policy in divisions of the, the corporate side so that there's an evaluation of the business um, and who gets what. And he's sitting there with his lawyer. And his lawyer's gone through all the paperwork and says, okay, I'll email over the policies and everything to you. And he says, um, what's your email? And the, the guy goes, I don't have an email. I've never needed one. And I said, how do you, you built all this empire and you haven't got an email. Imagine where you would be if you had an email. And he said, an office worker. And that's, <laughs> that's it, you know. That's the thing. Sometimes you've got to change the way you see things. I mean, even with something as simple as an email. I mean, these days it may sound a bit um, wrong not to have an email, but at the same time, it's the same reason a lot of people don't get hold of me on the phone. Um, because as soon as I give people Skype and stuff, they start calling me 
all times of the day because they're sitting in the afternoon in the Philippines and it is the middle of the night here in Spain. And I used to get it in the Middle East and I used to get it in many other places to the point now, if you call me, you'll have to book an appointment first. I've got somebody call me at 12 today because I won't answer the phone um, because people assume you will adapt to them where you, if you do it the other way around, you can get people to adapt to you whether they like it or not. Uh, same with emails. I mean, that's the funny thing. A lot of people sit on their phone answering every single email as it comes in. So people are then expecting that instant reply and start using it like a messenger. If you actually only answer your emails every three hours, you'll find they will adapt to that, including not asking you stupid questions. Um, because they'll be able to go and find out themselves rather than bugging you. You know, when you're sitting at lunch or sitting, sitting at home at night, they're not going to call you up. They're not going to uh, say, oh, Matt, um, I'm going through this and I don't really understand it. Can you explain it to me? You know what? Sit and read it till you do understand it because you're supposed to already know this stuff. You know, it's part of your job, not my job. My job is not here to work as your virtual assistant. Um, so sometimes you've got to take it on the chin that technology is sometimes there to hinder, but also we box ourselves in. You know, at the end of the day, a lot of people are not comfortable running their own business, quitting work, and taking that big risk of trying to set up on their own. The same as I was talking to somebody yesterday about visiting the Philippines for the first time. He's worried about the region that his wife lives in. And I was saying, well, just go to one of the more touristy spaces, places like Cebu or something, we, you know, because regionally, I think that's their nearest one uh, from the island that she lives on. Um, and I said, just go there, you know, go for a two week holiday, see if you like it or not, because she wants him to move to the Philippines, but it's outside his comfort zone. And I said, best way to do it is actually just go and see it for yourself, you know, make your own mind up because either, I mean, I find in the Philippines, it's one of those places you'll either love or loathe, you know, you, um, I remember, oh, what's his name? John, he's, he's an Italian guy. I remember him moving out there and he described Cebu when we picked him up in the airport as post-war because uh, of all the concrete and everything else and a lot of stuff just looked half finished at the time. Um, now, for me, it doesn't bother me in the slightest um, because I'm more interested in people. You know, at the end of the day, there's plenty of fake places to visit. I know when I went to Germany, I'd go to the Mosul Valley. I used to go there for the vineyards and stuff. Um, they'd have all the Christmas markets and things, which are nice, but they do, a lot of it is around tourism. It's not the real, <laughs> real Germany or whatever, but you can walk outside it and experience real Germany once you get out that little uh, bubble of tourism. And I think that's the, that's the important bit. You move to whatever your comfort zone is. The same a lot of people do not like going outside subdivisions. They do not like, um, I mean, that's what I find funny with some people that are so opinionated uh, that I do know go to the Philippines, get from the airport to the subdivision, stay in the subdivision, and then they go back to the airport. But they have so much information on the Philippines, uh, yet they've never actually been anywhere. Um, and the same as I've got another couple of people I know that actually live in condos that are very, very similar because the, they live near the big malls. Um, so they come out of the condos and go over to the malls do everything in the malls, go back, and that's that's their holiday a year. They don't really go anywhere. Um, but often people have opinions because they're ex expressing their view, not on fact, but what they think, but express it as fact sometimes. Um, but anyway, I've gone on enough. The channel will return to normal, and this is why I'm pushing this one out now on Thursday, half past 10 in the morning, uh, because by tomorrow everything will be back to normal. It's basically we're just dumping a load of the stuff from the other channels right now. We've got other stuff relating to the power plants that will, well, may follow today. It depends on how quickly I get through all this other stuff. And if you're interested in investing right now, I would say take a look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin at the moment has a good chance of having a retraction. Um, but throughout 2018, it's going to be a very active crypto year. Um, a little trading tip for you right now is VEN, -E -V -E chain, which has a launch on the 26th. Um, so four days, they're having a rebrand and there's some other stuff coming out on that. Um, 
take a look yourself. I'm not telling you what you should need to do yourself, but I've stuck a few thousand dollars in it um, just to see how it goes. I'm expecting some good results off that. But hey-ho, not always a winner. Thanks for watching.